say a big thank you to all of you that have come out here. I really, really appreciate that. Some of you have known for a long time. Some of you not for as long. But you know what? It's great seeing everybody and catching up with everybody. Now, first of all, I want to thank uh, Castro. Because Castro, uh, you already acclaimed already to be the Richmond Hill Councilor again down the road, right, for the next four years. So please thank Castro, give round of applause, and thank you for coming out today. And of course, also, we have to thank uh, Frank. Definitely. Frank has done so much for Markham. Markham really is a great, great, great city because of a lot of things that Frank does, and uh, he's a very busy man. I still remember, you know, uh, in the past, uh, Maggie and I were with you at a mall, and he said, hey, that's my wife over there. So even sometimes for him, he doesn't know where his own wife is, and I remember that. So it's really tough being a politician, especially when you're the mayor and when you're Frank. So please, give him a big round of applause. So I thank all of you, my friends who are ready, but also, as uh, Frank mentioned, big thank you to the family as well. Uh, to mom and dad, to my wife and my daughter, my father and mother-in-law, 
because it's tough. When you're on a campaign trail, you don't get to spend a lot of time at home. But we try and do our best and find that balance. So thank you to all my family for being so supportive. That is why I'm here. Thank you so much. And also, um, even though you only see the sign here, uh, the blue and yellow, that whole scheme and whatnot, uh, there's a campaign team that really helped to put all that together. So I want to acknowledge them here because uh, most of them are here. One of them had to go away for a trip. But uh, Rod, who's over here? Sherry, Sherry, Frank, Frank too, Frank too. Kay, Jennifer, Alan, Chris Sue as well, who baked the cake here for my birthday. Chris, where are you, Chris? I know you're here somewhere. There you are, Chris. Chris was actually one of the top five finishers for MasterChef Canada a couple of seasons ago, give or take. He's got two stores now called Dango, right? So Chris, for sure, we want you to bring a store here to mark him as well. Thank you so much to all my campaign team members who have made this possible, because I would not be here without the campaign team. Thank you. Now, so folks, a lot of people have asked me why I'm running. And I truly got the inspiration about eight years ago. Because eight years ago, I was a member of the Lions Club. Soon enough, year after, I became the president of that previous Lions Club that I was with. And I was really inspired because as a lion, you give back to the community. And I remember while I was in uh, Seattle, Washington, the international president told lions around the world that year to plant one million trees. That was the goal. Year after, I went to the international convention in Korea. While I was there, I was sitting with a whole bunch of Canadian lions. And I still remember this. Inter international president comes on stage again. The counter get going. Lions around the world that year hit one million trees that we did for the world. So that was very different lions. But it doesn't stop there. He said, just wait, keep watching the counter. That counter kept going and going and going and going. And lions that one year planted over 15 million trees around the world. So for me, that totally inspired me now to run for office and hopefully be able to help Markham and take Markham up to the next level. And that is why I'm here to run for office. Now, folks, I just want to end this by saying that we shape the future of Markham. All of us here, each and every single one of us, especially the fact that it's the seniors that help to build Markham to what it is today. Our generation right now is working hard as well. And also the next generation. I take my little girl, my three year old little girl, Alexa. Hi, Alexa. That's daddy. daddy. That's daddy. Alexa. That's a daddy. That's a daddy right here. I haven't seen you a lot, lady, but you should remember. <laughs> but, but I remember taking her to the community centers, right? Going to the libraries, right? Using the pools and whatnot. So that is really, really important. So that is why, you know, I'm here. So each one of you play a very, very important role uh, with Markham and with all of us. That's why it's time for better infrastructure. That's why it's time for more affordable housing. It's time to preserve Unionville Main Street. It's time for lower taxes. It's time to remove the snow banks from the driveways. But most of all, to move Markham together. Thank you. A few weeks ago at the uh, campaign kickoff for Hallett Usman. Uh, Hallett has just been an incredible, incredible community builder here in the city of Markham. Uh, and I think he just, uh, I don't know what the question was, but I love the answer that I heard. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're on council or off of council, Hallett has never, ever uh, wavered from his passion for the city of Markham and for doing the right thing. And he has incredible experience, uh, certainly as, uh, as someone professionally, uh, in the, as a chartered accountant, and certainly working with so many uh, cultural groups in, in our community, even before he was elected to Markham Council. Uh, obviously, his years around Markham Council, his years serving on various foundations in the city of Markham, helping seniors, helping people in our community, 
uh, his time around the Police Services Board. Uh, again, as, as chair of the Police Services Board, former chair, uh, I know that that gives you incredible insight into the community safety, the needs of what's required in our community and particularly in some of our, our neighborhoods. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I've seen a constant in Halid Usman and that's a passion and love for this community, but more importantly, for its people, for people, all people, all backgrounds. This is not someone that just deals with a particular community uh, when they sit on council and then when they go out to get elected, all of a sudden they're in every community. No, he's with every community all the time working with different cultural groups. And I think that's what uh, I, I think is very important. Uh, when I see the candidates, and democracy is wonderful, people can put their name in, they can put forward ideas. But when I see the list of candidates, they're, they're all nice people. Uh, but there's no one that has worked with a broad spectrum of community like Khaled Usman has. That's just the way it is, and that's the experience that he has. And I have to tell you, as the city of uh, Markham's mayor, uh, you know, it, it may look sometimes like an easy job on the outside, like anything. You know, if you're successful in real estate, someone says, oh, look at them. Boy, they're successful in real estate. They don't realize the commitment, the passion, the determination that you have to have in order to be successful. Well, I say that uh, in the coming four years, as great as Markham is, we are going to be facing other challenges, whether they're fiscal challenges, ways to deal with the pressures of growth because our, content, our community will continue to grow, the way in which we need social cohesion where all people of all backgrounds need to work together, come together to make this a wonderful place. I need someone at that table who can hit the ground running day one. I can't waste two years letting someone learn the job. And so I need Halid Usman at that table to deal with the important issues that we're going to face as a council. And the other thing I'm going to have to mention, and I didn't want to go here during this uh, election campaign, uh, you know, but unfortunately, uh, I want to start off by saying this. I don't think party politics belongs at the municipal level. Uh, I think at the municipal level, we need to put forward our own ideas, our own commitment to uh, the job of being a municipal councillor. I can tell you as the mayor of Markham, party politics does not enter into my thinking. If something's right for Markham, I don't care what party is at Queen's Park or down uh, up, at the, up in Ottawa. If something's right for Markham, it's right for Markham. If something's wrong for Markham, again, I don't care who's down at Queen's Park or who's up in Ottawa. If it's wrong for Markham, it's wrong for Markham. But I'll tell you, certain governments, and we'll do that in interview one other day, certain governments make incredible investment in public infrastructure uh, that had been ignored for many, many years, and, and I applaud that. But I want to now bring it into this election. Unfortunately, there's been a number of candidates in different wards, people running regionally, people running for mayor, and again, it's democracy. Anybody can do what they want to do. But they've gone out there and tried to sell themselves as, uh, you know, it's time to maybe jump on the conservative bandwagon because they're down at Queen's Park. And my gosh, haven't to certain parties just destroyed everything? Well, you know what? Ask them what they've done in the community. Don't just say, well, that's great. Anybody can jump on a boat when the boat is rising, and anyone can jump off the boat when the boat is sinking. But ask them personally, what have they done? in our community. Why do they deserve your vote? Them, not a party, not a leader, because we don't have a party system municipally. We don't have party leaders municipally. And so they have gone out there and they've tried to sell themselves that they're now, they're in. They're, they're the, the thing in fashion because their sign is blue, or thank goodness yours is sort of semi-blue, but uh, you know, it's blue, or and they're trying to sell themselves as being part of a political system that somehow knows better than anyone else. Well, you know what? I now want you to challenge those people, uh, not just because of party politics, but if they're going to stick to party politics, then you ask each and every one of them, as much as they've been for the last few weeks saying other parties have destroyed this and destroyed that, 
They are now destroying our communities by allowing people to smoke marijuana anywhere in our community. And I want to know why haven't these people who claim to be part of a new new party and a party that will do everything right, why haven't they spoken up? Why haven't they criticized uh, what's going on? And that's why I mean party politics does not belong at the municipal level. We as municipal leaders have to do what's right for our community, right for our city, right for our people. And so, you know, in Hallett's ward, I know there's a candidate that went out and legally changed their name. If I was them, I'd go see my lawyer tomorrow and try to get that name changed back. Because I'll tell you something, anyone that's running under that banner had better start answering questions under the party that they now claim is uh, answering everything so well. Why did they allow this to happen? This is incredible. That's something that's been said that we want to protect our kids, we want to protect the integrity of the community. They allow this to happen at every street corner, in any parking lot. So you know what? Look for those blue, dark blue signs and start asking them some questions about why they're destroying our community. Ask those candidates, because I'll tell you, I as mayor and our council, I know Hallett Usman would stand up as well. We've said no to marijuana shops in our community. And I'll tell you something, we in a big way are saying no way, no way. And if you're running under that so-called banner, you've got a lot of explaining to do because you've been criticizing a lot of things. And in the last few days, I haven't heard one of those candidates stand up and say this is wrong. And that's why party politics doesn't belong at the municipal level. Because we, the people, have to do what's right for our community. End of statement. So, I, I uh, say that anyone that uh, has attached themselves, there's nothing wrong. It's a free country. But anyone, uh, particularly in Hallett's ward, who's attached themselves to that conservative logo because they think it's the in thing to do. Let me tell you something. We got a lot of hard work to do. It's not about what party's popular today or what party is popular tomorrow. It's about working for the people of Markham, standing on our own conviction of what's right or wrong. And so, uh, Hallett, I just want to say, yeah, you may have picked neutral colors, but I know deep in his heart, go red, deep in his heart, he does what's right for the community. And I say this as uh, full disclosure, I have conservatives that are helping me run my campaign. They're my best friends. And they haven't gone out, they have not gone out and used party politics to advance my campaign. But the ones that are now need to answer, why aren't you speaking up? Is this how you're gonna act when you're on Markham Council? You'll shut up because you're not aligned with the, with the uh, principles of the party in power down at Queen's Park? Let me tell you something, no one's gonna shut me up. No one's gonna shut up Hala Duzman. We're gonna speak up for what's right in this community. So get out there, tell the Chinese community there's only one person they should be supporting. If they wanna see what's good and right for Markham, it's Hala Duzman and no one else. So thank you very much, have a wonderful day. I look forward to serving the people of Barcom for the next four years. Thank you very much. Wow. is not a surprise but a shock because I thought you were in New York and then I find out he was out there gambling making money <laughs> but that's okay thank you very much for this is the beauty of friendship I want to thank uh, Mr. Mary Yang for being here uh, because I know she has a very very busy schedule for her to take this time out I think it's, uh, it's a sign of great friendship that we've been working together so I thank you for, for, your, for your support and your presence here. Kenny Wong, I tell you, we, we are not only a fellow professionals, of course, belonging to the same profession, we're also good friends. 
whether when uh, whether it is the Markham Shoulder Hospital Foundation where he sits with me as a foundation member, board of director, or whether it's a community thing. We are always there because I believe that this is how you build communities. This is how you build communities by supporting each other. Francis Yuen is also an example of one of the hardest working person I know. It's just unbelievable when there's a cause, when there's an issue, when there is a need, Francis is there. Just may I have to make a call. So thank you, Francis. Michael is another story on his, on his own. This is, uh, un I was expecting you to say US man, but you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I have used uh, that name uh, when people don't understand who, when I say Khalid Usman, and they say, what? I say, the US man, and they understand right away. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, uh, uh, that was the title that Michael gave me. So thank you, Michael. You've been a great friend, and thank you for showing up. I want to thank every one of you that is here, because I know that each one of you, in your own right, uh, had a busy, weekend, but you took the time out. Thank you, Greg. As a counselor in the city of Markham, I'm not going to repeat because a lot, of, a lot of it has been said, but I believe that Markham City is a growing city. When I came to Markham 35 years ago, Markham population was about 70,000 people. Today, it's 370,000 people. Today, it's the high-tech capital of Canada. It has an amazing future in terms of development. So when you talk about being on the council, it's not only looking after your constituents, but it's also looking after the business of the city, which is the most important. As a finance chair, when I was there before, there were a lot of issues. And by the time I finished, we were winning those awards for the city of Markham, the financial reporting awards, which we didn't have. And also to help you out, Michael, TKT means Tamgha Khidmat, which was a award from the President of Pakistan. Wow. <laughs> Second medal was from the Governor General of uh, Canada, Ontario Med uh, Medal of Good Citizenship. Oh. <laughs> so, so those are rewards which you feel great about because somebody is. Uh, accepting the work you have done. Personally, when my campaign came up with the, the, the slogan, Community Builder, actually I was very, very happy. Because that is exactly what I've been doing all my life. Nothing to do with this campaign, but all my life, I love bringing communities together and building them. Because this is how I see the future of this world. I see helping each other, supporting each other so we can all prosper in this. Economically, same thing. We have to support each other and the new immigrants that are coming in, we have to make sure that we get them the opportunities. Coming back to my campaign itself, you will see, if you have gotten this card, you will see there are four major issues that we have identified that need support in Markham in my area. The biggest issue I have is traffic congestion. And whether you're traveling east to west or you're traveling west to east, in the morning you'll be stuck. But as they say, when there's an issue, there's always uh, things available to fix it. I have few suggestions which I want to implement. The biggest Improvement, I believe, if you have traveled Denison, you know it ends up uh, just east of uh, Markham Road. But if we were to take that Denison and extend it up to the ninth line, most of the traffic that is coming on 14th Avenue and on Steeles will, will sort of go on to Denison, don't have to go there, and that will help uh, ease the traffic problem. I'm just saying ease. That's only one. At the city, at the Steels Avenue, finally, I remember when I used to be counselor, we've been negotiating with Toronto, and uh, we've had issues. But finally, 
to bring in, bring this uh, topic to a closure. The Steels Avenue uh, expansion, uh, the uh, the environmental studies have been done. The it is at the um, I guess design stage with Toronto. So with the new council coming in, whether it's 46 or whatever the number, they will approve the design. Once the design is approved then they'll do the costing because right now we don't know how much it's going to cost uh, your region to, to contribute. So I'm hoping that within the next year and a half to two years, we will have the cost, the allocation and the ownership. This is so unfortunate that the ownership of Steels Avenue is with Toronto while the most of the users are from the York region. So they've been giving us a hard time, no inter interesting rivalry here, but I think we can work with them. So it's a design stage. I am hoping that in the next two to three years, we will be building Steels Avenue. And it's a six lane uh, road all the way up to the Pickering boundary line. So what will happen is that will relieve a lot of pressure from the ninth line, from our 14th Avenue, for the, with the traffic going east to west or west to east, we'll have a great relaxing time. Similarly on 14th Avenue, which is a third uh, street going east-west, uh, the intersection of uh, Markham Road and 14th is one of the, in my mind, is one of the most dangerous. Because I stand there every morning waving at people. And I see, I see, it only needs it, just small improvements. And that will alleviate the traffic congestion. What we need is Turning lanes, widen the turning lanes. Right now what happens is the traffic comes in from two lanes and ends up in one lane. So of course it's going to be a blockage. Doesn't need a scientist to figure that out. Even an accountant can figure out. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are the end also, what I want to do is encourage bike lanes. I figured it out. There are nine schools from the on, on the near 14th Avenue from McCarmon Road all the way up to uh, Ninth Line, uh, or, or let's say the Donald Cousin Parkway, there are nine schools. Every morning, nine school kids are dropped by parents, and in the afternoon, they're picked up by parents. They're on the road. So what I want to encourage is build a cycle path on 14th Avenue so the students can bike themselves. They don't have to take the parents and the cars. That will help the environment. That will help the traffic. So that is, those are some of the suggestions. I may have bored you with the details, but I think they're important. I think we need somebody to think it through as to how to not just say I have an issue, but also say, what am I going to do when I get in there? Similarly, we have issues with marijuana. Even though it's going to be legal, but in the city of Markham, I'm one of them who is voted with the, for the provincial government wanted us to be the first one uh, to have a uh, sale point, and we said no. The biggest issue is having sales point close to schools. Having sales point now when the 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 issue was of having it controlled sales through LCBO or organization like that, that was great. Because at least then there was some control. But tomorrow, a mama baba shop can open up next to a school and start selling there. It's not that they will, there is going to be. So one of the things I'm saying is I do not want, if they, even if we have to, I don't want it close to schools. I don't want it close to the parks because that's public park. And I don't want it for youth under 19. And that's a law. That's a federal law. Nobody can do it. But when you do it at, near the schools, you can't control it. So that is an issue that is popping up. That's going to be very important for me. And, uh, and there's a uh, petition going on right now uh, that I think I'm going to be signing, which also says the same similar thing, uh, that we do not want any sales uh, uh, I guess stores close by in Markham. Uh, I also are committed to have affordable housing. And that's where we need our two friends, the federal and the provincial government. Because they are the ones with the money. <laughs> right? 
It is a need of the seniors. In Markham, we don't have really senior centers because this is a new growing community while Toronto has hundreds of them, but we don't. The ones that we have are the older ones and the accessibility is, is, uh, is very difficult. As you can see, if somebody ends up with long-term care, there's a six to nine month uh, wait with CCAC. Anybody who's familiar or have senior parents will find. But we're talking about much more than just uh, long-term disability. We're talking about normal uh, living for seniors where it should be affordable. So something that I'll be working with the federal government and the provincial government to get the funding because I remember there was a program a uh, long time ago whereby it was funded three way and there was some affordable housing that was built. As a matter of fact, there's one next to my office uh, that was built and it's it's doing fabulous because there are a lot of people that that who could not afford are, uh, are living there now. So there are lots of uh, issues uh, that, are, that I want to undertake. I'm committed. The reason why I'm saying that is that I'm not running for the sake of running. I have a track record. I have the experience. And I have the knowledge. I want to put all these three to work. And I, the best thing is I have the commitment and the desire to serve the community. And that's what I'm trying to do. Ask that please help me get elected so that I can serve you. That's the only way I can do to serve you if you help me get elected. But thank you very much. Thank you everyone. As I started to explain to you the reason why I want to run. Why I want to run is to serve. I don't need to earn money. I can earn much more being a chartered accountant itself. I have a lot of experience in the community and this can be vouched by another chartered accountant. The amount of time I spend in the community, I can be making money. But that is not what I'm here for. I make enough money. <laughs> All right. So I make enough money out there. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's my passion. I want to serve the community. Even when I was a counselor, and that I served the community to the best of my ability, and my mayor that has just walked in will, will vouch for that, that how hard I work, number one. Number two, the two times you did mention, yes. One time I ran for region, and that was a time when Tony Wong came back from NPP and ran on the last day. So that was a shock. But regardless, uh, I lost by about 500 votes in a region. I did get some more than 17,000. The next time I ran in the same council, uh, sorry, seat as Ward 7. And yes, I did lose. But it doesn't matter. Let me tell you who the winners are. Winners are those who are committed. And, are, and believe in something, and strive for it, and work hard for it. So these two things do not matter in the system. And, then with, and there's a saying, little battles, etc. on the way, you lose some or you win some, doesn't matter. It's a war that you got to win. Great. <laughs>
台做啦喎，冇啦。其實我自上年開始都已經話冇喺電視台做啦。咁其實點解我會即係諗住想話去從政啊？即係對我嚟講，其實 it's not about 從政咯。因為自細到大我都係誒喺中學開始我都已經係做 volunteer 啦。咁其實接觸社區多嘅時候，真係覺得社區喺唔同嘅範圍咧，其實都有好多嘅需要嘅。咁直至到我啊。嗯喺新時代電視報道新聞嘅時候，過去嗰十二年喺新時代嘅時候，其實我角色一號都係一個溫和嘅、呃、方向啦，即、就、係、是、單向咁樣將一啲嘅信息傳俾大家。咁但係當我其實有一個矛盾喺度就係你自己誒喺個社區得耐嘅時候，你都會聽到好多其他唔同層面嘅人嘅一啲嘅聲音，你都好想諗下有咩辦法可以幫到佢哋。咁所以即係要有呢個意念萌生咗，就係、是、話如果我可以 take the lead， 或者我 take one step forward， 去 just to put myself forward to help more people。咁其實最有效嘅方法 is just running for it， 啊誒 study council， 嚟 doing more community service community work。所以咧，呢、这個一路都係我就四年前開始，第一次踏上呢個所謂參選之路咧，其實嘅一個好重要、好重要嘅一個推動力啦。咁所以係一路以嚟，我都好多謝好多身邊嘅朋友幫助我啦。咁啊，包括輝哥啦，唔使講啦，同埋 Doctor Ng 咯，係啦，咁等等啦。咁其實誒，我喺啊 FCCN 都好多謝 Doctor Ng 同埋 Andy 俾咗好多機會我喺 Community Service 裏面，我知道好多唔同嘅啊或者移民又好啊唔同嘅階層、各行各業嘅人。佢哋工作上面係有需要，咁跟住我亦都喺多牙會工作啦，多牙會會長謝美龍先生都喺度，咁啊，所以都要 say 個 hi 先，咁啊，我都好多謝阿 Nelson 都俾咗好多嘅 guidance 我，咁過去嗰一年我喺多牙會誒擔任行政總監嘅時候咧，其實都係更加深入咁樣了解到我哋新移民落户嘅需要，咁 actually。萬錦第八區其實就係有好多新移民，中國嚟嘅新移民啊，香港嚟移民嘅人，咁所以呢個都係其實我一個好大嘅服務對象。咁長話短説啦，咁基本上咧，如果真係有機會我可以當選嘅話，其實同四年前講嘅嘢一樣㗎，我都係會係全職去投身，希望可以服務到我哋呢一區嘅居民。其實呢個係我一路以嚟嘅意念咯，真係無論誒佢結果係點樣，但係每一次我聽到市民同我反映話我有問題。可以希望可以解決，當我可以交翻個 solution 俾佢哋，或者我可以 as a bridge 啊 in between the council and the resident， 其實我自己都有好大嘅滿足感喎。咁所以一路以嚟，好多人都問我，我點解你唔去選下其他嘅 work 啊，或者啊、呃、去做其他嘅 level 啊方面嘅工作？咁嗱，嗰啲我係之前説嘅，因為 because I grew up in this world in 1948, I've been living in this world for over fifteen years, and while I study here, I work here, and I've been through a lot of different、um, issues、uh, with、uh, neighbors、um, in this area. 所以我好熟悉嘅區，我亦都好希望可以將我嘅 expertise 或者我識得嘅嘢咧，可以帶翻去呢一區 ，revive 到呢一區咯。因為 Markham actually what it is, is situated in between the city of Toronto. And downtown market,、um, the traffic is the number one issue. So hopefully, if there is going to be further development, I just want to let the city know. Hopefully,、uh, we、we'll、just don't forget about what we.、Uh, the first thing is like we should ease the traffic barrier in the in the very first place. I want to be a point of view. So you let. 啊，係咯，所以希望大家如果真係住喺呢區嘅話，咁都不妨俾多啲意見我，啊，都睇下可以點樣可以將大家嘅意見可以帶入去嘅事業裏頭。咁多謝各位，非常感謝大家，因為這個時間就是不是很長，所以我們我也不好意思就說這麼多，但是也希望大家如果住這一區的話，萬景十年八區的市的的的居民的話，也可以多給我多一點意見，比如說交通方面怎麼樣改善的，因為過去四個月呢，我已經走訪。有超过九千户我们这里的居民，然后呢，就是得到了我们有归纳了十二大的很大的大家关注的那个话题，希望也我也提供了一些解决的办法啊，希望到时候如果当选的话呢，就可以尽力的啊，下在市政府那个层面跟大家去啊，看看怎么样去改善我们这个社区。好、啊，所以啊，希望我今次呢个呢四个月咧，其实都好啊，走访咗啲我啲万家嘅屋企嘅嘅屋企，咁得出咗好多嘅。
誒近商啦。咁其實咧，當高温近商，除咗交通之外咧，產船係一個好大嘅問題。咁你不停我去開門嘅時候，個個都係咁同我講。咁所以希望咧，今次如果真係選到嘅話，好似四年前一樣，我都係講啦。如果有產船化嘅呢個服務咧，就真係又可以惠及到好多嘅人。咁我哋可以誒喺市政府嘅層面睇下點樣可以推遲呢個 fair contract。喂，等 current contractor， 同埋睇下我哋有咩空間，點解 city of Toronto 做到，即係又安做到，咁點解 Park 都可唔可以都有呢個 service 咧？咁樣，咁所以希望嗱，大家都真係繼續嘅，可以同心嘅去為萬錦市嘅將來嘅發展都一齊盡一份力。多謝曬大家 ，thank you so much。